the adult learner, making things happen by releasing the energy of others. My name is LaWanda Jones Collins, and I am your presenter. I want to begin with an overview of energy, which is the art and science of helping adults learn. It is to educate, to empower, to nurture the self-directedness in the learner. Androgy is comprised of a core of uh, six learning principles that can be applied to the adult learning situation. The first one is the learners need to know. That is answering their question of why is this important? How is this going to help me uh, be a better person, a better wife, a, a better doctor, a better lawyer, a better educator, a better person? The learner's self-concept, uh, the, the, the learner, the adult learner sees themselves as a self-directed learner. They are able to control their learning. And, and Androgy takes that into consideration. It also allows the learner to bring and use their, uh, their experiences, their rich resources, and, and that comprised with the other learners helps to uh, create an environment that is uh, overflowing uh, with information for learning. The learner's readiness to learn, and uh, that focuses on that they'll learn when it's something they feel they need to know. The orientation to learning uh, looks at that the learner is motivated to the extent that they perceive the learning will help them. So, um, and then finally, the sixth one is motivation, and that motivation are the internal pressures, the, the, the things within that, that causes a yearning, a passion, a desire to find that answer to it.
Noel, uh, in looking at this concept of releasing the energy of others, uh, began thinking about um, the definition of a leader. Thinking about releasing energy and then thinking about the definition of an effective leader. And he, and he said that the most common definition is effective leaders are those who are, able, who are able to get people to follow their orders. It is like this clown. They are the, the leader is the one with all of the information, with all of the vision, with all of the ability, and then he takes from what he has and gives it to the workers, and then the workers just go do, just like the clown is doing to the little, little girl, telling her how many balloons she can have, what color she can have, um, how long the string can be, whatever. But it, he said that the, the leader only operates off of the energy that is within him. And then the workers utilize, no, they only utilize the energy to follow the direction, but there's no creativity. There's no innovation involved in that. And so he said, under this doctrine, under this definition, he said, the output of the system was limited to the vision and ability of the leader. Profound. And then he began thinking, still that releasing the energy of others and how it relates to leadership. And he had a paradigm shift. And he said the highest function of leadership is releasing the energy of the people in the system and managing the processes for giving that energy direction for mutually beneficial goals. Or simply stated, it is the form of leadership that releases the creative energy of the people being led. And he said, that sounds like a good definition, but does it really work? Is it just me, or can this be proved? And so he did a comprehensive study, and in that comprehensive study, he uh, observed and talked to business executives and educators, educational administrators, and organizational and political leaders. And he re looked at uh, the literature on human behavior and organizational dynamics and leadership. And in this study, he found a common thread or theme which he termed the characteristics of a creative leader, of a leader that releases the energy of others. 
Let's look at the characteristics. The first characteristic of um, and, and a leader that releases energy or the characteristics of a creative leader, he said, they make a different set of assumptions about human nature. When people perceive the locus of control to reside within themselves, they are more creative and productive. Say, uh, uh, restated, if, if people believe that they have some input, that they have some control over what's being done, that they can be free to try things, they're more creative, they're more innovative. He said another characteristic of a leader that releases energy or a creative leader, he said they accept as a law of human nature that people feel a commitment to a decision in proportion to the extent that they feel they have participated in it. it that basically is saying that people have some buy-in when they have some participation. If you allow me to participate, then I feel like I belong, and therefore the commitment is greater. And, and therefore these, a, a, a leader that releases energy, a creative leader is inclusive in the uh, planning process in assessing needs and formulating goals and designing lines of action, carrying out activities, and evaluating results.
Another characteristic of a leader that releases energy or a creative leader is they believe in and use the power of self-fulfilling prophecy. People tend to rise to the expectations of others. I'm going to say it one more time. People tend to rise to the expectation of others. I read an article by Barry Salzberg, CEO of Deloitte, and it said that he started out and, and worked his way up in the organization, and when he started out as an attorney, he had um, a boss that was a controlling leader, and, you know, everything began and ended with him. And he said he never wanted to be that kind of leader. And, and so when he became a partner, he was satisfied with being a partner. But it was those that were around him that said, Barry, I can see you as CEO of our organization. I can see you as a leader. I can see you doing greater things than just being a partner. And he said it was in the pushing of those around him that he began to see himself as not just a partner, but as a CEO. And, and he, he was CEO of a division, but now in May of this year, he became CEO of the entire Deloitte organization. People believe that they will rise as high as you encourage them or expect them to rise. Um, leaders that release energy or creative leaders, they highly value individuality. They see the purpose of all life activities as a way to enable each individual to achieve his or her full and unique potential. That's um, similar to Maslow's theory of the self-actualizing person being able to use all experiences, good and bad, uh, to reflect on and help make uh, a better person of themselves. A leader that releases energy or a creative leader stimulates and rewards creativity. Creativity is a basic requirement for the survival of individuals, organizations, and societies. You have heard of the Blue Ocean Strategy, 
which says that uh, in order for growth to occur, that you have to tread out into new waters. And it's not necessarily a totally different line of business, but just a new uh, thought, a new paradigm shift, a, a new uh, process. Um, and, and that blue ocean strategy says just that, that I need to move out in territory that's not so heavily treaded, encouraging inno innovation and creativity, which confirms the idea that it is our very need for survival. That's why when blue oceans cease, then you get stagnation and ultimately death. This is a, uh, Matt, um, Knowles did um, a comparison chart where he compared some of the characteristics of controlling um, organizations and controlling classrooms and then releasing or creative classrooms and then controlling classrooms and businesses. So I'm going to kind of go through these quickly, um, but you'll have these for your own review. Some of the uh, thoughts that, that kind of step out, controlling uh, the average human being inherently dislikes work and will avoid it if he can. That's the controlling attitude of the leader. Um, the, the, the controlling environment, the leader believes that the average human prefers to be directed. But a releasing environment says that Man will exercise self-control and self-direction in that which he is committed. In the controlling environment, the student cannot be trusted to pursue his own learning. In the releasing environment, significant learning is acquired by doing. in the controlling environment. Presentation equals learning. Because you are listening to this presentation, it means that you have learned it. But in a releasing environment, it, the learner is facilitated, learning is facilitated by the student's responsible participation in the learning process. Another characteristic of a leader that releases energy 
or a creative leader is that leader is committed to a process of continuous change and are skillful in managing change. They are well grounded in the theory of change and skillful in selecting the most effective strategies for bringing about change. Um, Nose also did a chart where he looked at static organizations and innovative or organizations. So what I did here was just kind of highlighted some action words that could quickly, uh, you could quickly identify the various organizations. So um, in a static organization or a controlling organization, there's rigidness, task centers, impersonal control through coercive power. In a, in a releasing or innovative organization, there's flexibility, people-centered, warm, intimate, trusting, releasing of the personnel. In a, um, in, an, in a releasing environment or a creative leader emphasizes internal motivators over external motivators. External motivators, grades, uh, stickers, rewards. Um, and then internal motivators are those uh, self-fulfilling uh, things like pride and value and self-worth and uh, innovation and creativity and, and exploring. Um, and that is not to say that external does not have its place, but what he is saying is, is external should not be the norm, but internal should be the focus of a creative leader, internal motive. A leader that releases the energy of others, or a creative leader, encourages people to be self-directed. They realize that because of previous conditioning as uh, dependent learners in their school experiences, some adults need initial help in learning to be self-directing and will look for the leaders to help in this area.
I want to close with this thought from Noel. And he said, we shall never know how many adults desire intelligence regarding themselves and the world in which they live until education once more escapes the pattern of conformity. The floor is open for questions and comments.